Okay, so Ezeal sent me four Eve, Eve battery cells, all 280, <coughs> 280 amp hours, and they also sent me a JVD BMS, also 200 amp hours uh, for a 12 volt battery. So they sent me these. Ezeal is based in the USA, so it took me about a week to get them. And uh, let's go test them out and see how they are. Okay, so we're fully charged over here. Each cell is at about 3.55 voltage. I'll show that, show you that in a second on the BMS. Uh, so we're just below 3.65 for each cell, uh, but that's totally fine. You know, we're at probably 99, 98% capacity. We've got the BMS that's provided to me. Uh, it's got Bluetooth, so we're gonna be able to monitor all the power discharge over the whole time. Got my 100 watt inverter over here. And well over here, we have a small minor home heater. So I'm gonna turn this heater on. We're gonna try to pull a little less than a kilowatt. And hopefully in you know a little under around three and a half hours, this uh, battery should be run down and we'll get a decent estimate of its capacity. So here we go. Let's turn this bad boy on and see if it works. I can hear the thing spinning, but. Light is on. Okay. We Oh yeah, we're definitely producing a lot of heat now. I only have a 100 watt inverter, so I'm gonna check on that. But yeah, capacity set us to go. Let's see how these work out. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, capacity test didn't go 100% as planned. My inverter can't go below 12 volts. These bad boys can go down to almost 10 volts and still get power, uh, but I'm not worried at all. I got well over 80% capacity and they were still at three volts, so they still had plenty of power to give. So I'm not worried in the slightest that they have 200 capacity. So let's dig in and actually talk about the cells themselves. So these are Eve cells, 280 amp hours. Um, they look grade A. Uh, Ezeal says that they're grade A. I have no way to test that or know that, but none of them have any sort of bulging or anything. They're in perfect condition. And I've ordered cells from multiple suppliers. <clears throat> I've also ordered Eve cells. Uh, these are as nice as any cells I've ever seen. So again, not worried about that at all. They have uh, bolted in little M6 bolts and you're gonna need M6 nuts to get on them. Uh, they also do come with, they come with four bus bars for these four. Uh, the bus bars seem pretty nice. I don't know about uh, you know what they're exactly made of. They're probably nickel plated copper, but you might wanna make your own if you're worried about using lots of power. Uh, for the purposes of my test, they didn't give any issues. There wasn't any voltage drop or anything like that. So I'm quite happy with them. So here are the cells. As you can see, they're really clean. Um, I fully charged them up to 3.6 and there was basically no bulging at all that I could see. So they're clean cells. They're the best looking cells I think I've ever received. Uh, really like them overall. Uh, otherwise it comes with this JBD 200 amp hour BMS. I really like the build of the BMS. It's solid, it's not huge. It doesn't come with a built-in fan, but it has a massive heat sink on the bottom here. So I'm not too worried about it. Comes with two temperature sensors which I've put in here, which are fantastic. Uh, it also comes with uh, Bluetooth, which I think is really handy because it is nice to see an app. Um, I will say the app wasn't as great as I thought it would be in terms of keeping track of the state of charge, but it does report the voltage of the battery, which is pretty much all you need. Um, and it has balancing uh, and Otherwise you can monitor the stats of the individual cells. I found that functionality a little bit flaky in the sense that it monitors the battery, the overall battery and the individual cells very well, but it doesn't always report the individual cells. But it totally worked extremely well when I did over voltage protection and under voltage protection. So I'm not worried about its reliability at all. And it was not finicky. Once I set it up, it just worked. Uh, importantly, here are the leads for the BMS. I soldered these on. I've had some bad experiences with these tiny wires. I think soldering is a great way to go, but obviously you can crimp them as well. Um, and as I mentioned, or as I'm going to mention, I use these little M6 bolts, put the washers on them, and just put them in like that. Come on, come on, yeah. With one of these thread in there. So you put this in there, thread it in there. You might need some washers to, uh, to make it tight, because as you can see there, it's pretty short. So it's very, well, it's very easy for the length of this to exceed and go into the uh, box, which you don't want to do. So you might have to put a couple washers with the lug nut, but otherwise I think it's a really solid BMS. I really like it. Uh, it's really easy to work with. And uh, the app 
was a little, not as good as I'd want it to be, but it was much more responsive than the Dolly. So for the Dolly, when you change the settings, oftentimes uh, it just, it seems like it didn't reflect like the actual, you'd say, okay, change the settings, update, but then it wouldn't actually listen to your change in settings. This, um, you can't change the settings, so you can't tell it when to do low voltage or high voltage disconnect or uh, things like that. Um, it, that's built in, it's just standard LifePo functionality. So I think it's 3.6 and 2.5 are the cutoffs. But you can do things like turn on uh, balancing or turn off the charging and discharging, and those work really, really well. So I was really, really happy with that. The, overall, the app was pretty responsive. But this is the kind of BMS where you can, you, know, you can check in on the voltage through the BMS, but really this is a set it and forget it BMS. It works really well. You set it up. You don't have to worry about it. Um, if you want to control how much you're going to charge or discharge to, you do that through your inverter and your tra solar charge controller. Right, your solar charge controller tells you what to charge up to. Uh, you say, hey, don't charge above this. And your uh, inverter, you can set it to, hey, don't uh, you know, disconnect this certain low voltage if you have that kind of inverter. So I haven't worked one with these BMSs, but I will say that this was the easiest BMS I've ever used. So I have a Dolly BMS on my home system. Uh, this was really easy to set up, very standard, comes with Bluetooth. There is an app called Shaoshan. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, but it worked really well. Uh, the app is great. Uh, it wasn't as consistent in things in terms of like state of charge, but in terms of low battery connect, low power, uh, sorry, low temperature disconnect, and then uh, low voltage and high voltage disconnect, it worked perfectly uh, without any issues. And it's a very beefy, nice BMF, BMS, and it really didn't have any issues getting set up. The Dolly BMS took me forever to get working. This, I didn't have any issues with. So I'm very happy with this. Uh, but otherwise, you know, let's talk about a larger discussion of where should you source your cells, right? So these cells look as good or better than anything I've gotten from China. They have the same capacity. They're slightly different. They have the bolts in them. Some of the ones I received before didn't already have the bolts. So you have to buy those. Uh, but otherwise, you're getting pretty much the same product. So I think you're getting some really high quality here uh, versus what you can get from China. Why would you go with the U.S.? So I think this is actually a kind of a personal decision. You're going to pay more if you buy cells from the US, definitely, but you're gonna get a lot more sort of security and reliability, I think, from the US. So I've heard a lot of nightmares about people getting things from China, blah, blah, blah. But also the main thing is it takes two months or sometimes a month to get them. I don't know what shipping terms are right now. They might be a lot better than they used to be, but still it's gonna take a long time to get them. And if you have any issues getting a return, getting a refund, getting an exchange, could be a real hassle. The nice thing about Ezeal, and they told me their points, they're based out of Houston, so you can actually go in store and inspect them before you take them home if you're in the area. Uh, you can do local pickup, obviously, if you're there to inspect them. And they're based in the US, so if you're getting shipping, you know, the shipping to me took, I think, less than a week when they shipped them to me. You can do overnight shipping if you want as well. Um, and you can actually talk to someone who's in the US and can help troubleshoot issues with you. Communication with China, as you know, can be really, really difficult. There's a language barrier there often. But often, you know, they're just on different time zones and everything's through email. So, you know, I know when I ordered my cells from China, it was, everything worked out and I was very happy with my experience, but it was a nail biter. You know, you're spending a lot of money, you're sending it away and then you're waiting two months and you're really hoping you're getting what you want because you know that if you don't get what you want, it could be another two months to get, wait, to get things fixed and you might not be able to get things fixed at all. So I really like working with the US based company. They've got, you know, they're a US supplier, their representatives are here. Uh, you can do all this with local pickup, fast delivery, and they have all the information on the cells, they have the data sheet available online, all that kind of stuff, and they have BMSs that work really well and are perfect. So uh, they're perfect for at least this application. So I had a really positive experience. It's up to you. I think you're gonna play a slight premium to be in the US, but I think for the next rounds of cells that I'm buying to upgrade my system, it will probably be purchasing in the US because that extra premium I just think is worth it for the peace of mind and the ease of doing it, and I don't wanna wait six weeks. Uh, so that's just my thoughts. So I did decide to check out what these bus bars are made of. Uh, ground that down a little bit on here, and it looks like we do have nickel plated copper. So they're pretty good, um, seem fine to me. I say personally, I like to make them out of like two gauge wire with lug nuts because you can uh, get a little more flexibility. You can put a little extra in there. Um, I will say making your own bus bars that are the perfect size is really, really hard and I wouldn't recommend it unless you're used to doing metal work. So if you're gonna use bus bars, you probably go ahead and use these. Otherwise, get some two gauge wire, buy some lug nuts, buy some lugs and uh, crimp them yourself. I think that's the best solution, but I think these are pretty good. Certainly didn't give me any issues, but I wasn't running more than about, you know, 70 amps on these. If you're going to be above 70 amps, especially on these lower system, the smaller systems, uh, you might want to think about uh, upgrading. But I think these are probably good for 
at least 70 amps, they didn't seem to be getting too hot to me. All right, thanks guys for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Happy to talk more about this. If you enjoyed this video, please like or subscribe. I really appreciate it. Otherwise, uh, I'm very happy with the experience here and I'm gonna make another video probably in the next couple weeks about how to actually assemble this into a nice, easy battery. Okay?